Hello, my name's Peter Judge from Data Centre Dynamics and I'm at CBIT for our show here. And with me I've got Christian Kaufman from Akamai and also from RIPE NCC. We're going to talk about the role of content delivery networks in data centre markets and their impact on each other. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for the invite. Okay. I sometimes think of content delivery networks and uh, data centres in two separate categories. You're here to make the data centres work better and store their content in places so they don't have to deliver it quite so often. Or maybe I'm oversimplifying. So actually data centres and content delivery networks are basically like two sides of a metal. Mm -hmm. For a content delivery network what you need is a certain amount of servers yes. where the content is on. That could be a video file, a download file, a web page. This server has to be you know, connected to the internet and it has to be powered and stand somewhere. And where else would we put a lot of servers if not in data centers? Okay. So how many servers does Akamai have? <laughs> That's a good question. So by the time probably people see that video, the number is already higher. So um, we add constantly servers. Right now we are a little bit above 170,000 okay. globally and uh, they are spread over multiple data centers. So I think we are in a little bit above 2,000 locations, all okay. small or big data centers with a certain amount of service in between them. Mm -hmm. And how many gigabits or terabits per second of network capacity do you have? Uh, to be honest, I don't even know exactly how much we have, and it's a little bit hard to calculate. I can tell you how much we serve right now, which mm -hmm. is 27 terabits per second on an average day. Right. So, you know, that puts us in a category like with the two or three biggest tier one networks, somewhere there in between. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot of traffic. The capacity itself is much bigger, but as it is not used to the full extent, it's also a little bit hard to calculate. So, Okay. So now, um, in the world of data centers, I see a couple of different trends happening. There are the massive, big cloud scale-out data centers that are getting bigger all the time. Mm -hmm. And there also seem to be a lot of increase in um, modular, um, small data centers, which are kind of on local sites and things. So um, as these trends happen, does that make a difference to how the content delivery networks pick up the slack? Yes. One has to differentiate between the various kinds of da uh, data centers and actually CDNs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my presentation later on, I will actually talk about that. So data centers which put the content very much to the edge, and Akamai is a good example for that. We are actually using both. Mm -hmm. So we use the very big ones because they give us a certain efficiency, or we use them for own infrastructure purposes. Mm -hmm. But we also want to be closer to you as the end user at home, so that you can download an ultra HD video um, it makes a big difference for the performance if the data center and the servers are closer to you. So we are using the small ones as well. Right, okay. And is efficiency important to you in your data centers? Uh, efficiency is an important point, but um, on the other side, as we spread our servers globally, where we start with the efficiency aspect is um, when we do our own homework. So we look for servers and routers and equipment which is not as power hungry mm -hmm. um, so that we don't have to pay the high energy bills, especially right. in Europe. If but um, in general, it is probably more important to be closer to the end user and have a certain performance. That's why our customers are choosing us than optimizing, you know, just going for a certain data center. So one example might be um, Iceland. Mm -hmm. Iceland was, you know, the poster child where you have green energy, you have the cooling, and it is actually relatively cheap in comparison to data centers like in established markets, London, Frankfurt, whatever. But the problem is Iceland is very far from your house at home if you're yes. not living in Iceland itself. So performance-wise, even if you can put probably some servers there, the majority of the servers have to be close to the end user, and therefore Performance is probably more important than power efficiency and the price. Right. And so may maybe own, uh, remote locations can only handle some kinds of load or work. Right. If you, the traffic profile and the customers we have is very diverse. So this might start with a download on one side, mm -hmm. which goes in the background like an update for your operating system. That one is not so time critical. If we serve that and it is a little bit slower, you might not even see the bar 
because mm -hmm. it goes in the background, then you probably don't care if it would come from Iceland. If you look in Ultra HD video and you know you have to wait 30 minutes till it buffers before you can see your favorite show, then you're probably not so happy right. about it. So it really depends on which kind of mm -hmm. content we are talking about. Okay, and as a data center equipment customer, as it were, does Akamai have um, particular sort of demands and needs for the servers and network equipment that you buy that are perhaps different from other users? You mean the servers and routers we are buying? Yes. Um, to be honest, we are relatively conservative when it comes to that point, so we use a lot of more or less standard equipment. Mm -hmm. It's not like a, a Google right now, you know, which built their own stuff and they forget the metal around and, you know, put all on one little um, mm -hmm. very specified hardware themselves. We rather buy relatively regular stuff. Okay. Because we can't actually control, and that is a good example for the difference between like a Google or us, our stuff has not just to work in a very fancy own Akamai data center, we mm -hmm. put it all around the world. Yes. So the equipment which we buy have to work in Frankfurt, but it has to work somewhere in Africa as well, where the conditions and probably the data center has very different specs, so that it doesn't fall apart and dies there because it was specified for a very specific environment. We mm -hmm. are rather on the conservative side when it comes to our equipment. Okay, because you're putting your kit out there on the edge. Right. So the other service providers don't have to. Yep, and that's what we are selling, right? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. Well, thank you for coming to our show, and we'll, I'll enjoy your talk as well. Thanks a lot. Great.